and so I'm going to do another video on pool maintenance. So um, one of the disadvantages to having a affordable lawn service is they blow crap into my pool every week. Yeah, it is what it is. So um, I'm going to be making some upgrades to my pool. And the first upgrade is going to be a centrifugal water filter to try and keep small crap out of my cartridge filter. This was not that expensive, and I think it will um, save me money. So this is a CircuPool TJ16 Typhoon centrifugal water filter. And um, anyway, let's see what's in the box. Mm -hmm. um, do it to it. That's it there, and it's going to go there. It's a nice piece of uh, acrylic, and it's got a little spot here for a, um, a drain. So we'll just set this over here for the moment. It includes a union. That's really nice. Installation manual. Even came with a really nice valve for draining the crap out of it. Uh, they included some junk. And the other half of the union. And this is this is nice because these unions are expensive. Looks like they gave me a two inch union though, and my whole system is one and a half inches, so we'll see where this gets us. I read the instructions, I'll be right back. It's just my luck that this is a two inch system and I only have, a, I mean, my pool is a one and a half inch system. So I don't have any two inch pipe in here, except maybe this little tiny piece there. So I've got to go and get, um, I've got to go and get a one and a half to two inch bushing. I'm going to pick up a few of them because I have a hunch that the chlorinator is going to do that. And that's going to be another video where I install a saltwater chlorinator. Anyway, I'll be back in a few. Okay, I went to Home Depot and I got this. It's a two by one and a half inch adapter. So now I can continue forward with this. And the first thing I can do is I got to disconnect the uh, existing pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and do that.
hopefully uh, nothing's changed on these. And of course I couldn't get that lucky. So, <sighs> screw my luck. Home Depot doesn't carry the same size uh, union anymore. I think I can recycle this one though. So let me go ahead and make a cut over here. is a fine coarse thread as well. Well, that sucks. Potentially this means I gotta go to Home Depot yet again. Um, let me go look at that other fitting. So I'm going to remove, um, there's a piece of pipe in here and I'm going to remove it because I want to save this because I really don't feel like going and spending more money on fittings at Home Depot. So first step is to cut this off around there. the lock ring and the next thing is to get this chucked up in the vise. So let me you don't want to put too much pressure on it because you know we're trying to save the fitting not destroy it. And what we're going to do here is just remove it. Now that that's out of the way, we can make a couple of cuts. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to make a cut here, here, and here, and then we're going to use a screwdriver to pop the pieces out, and that'll actually save the fitting. It's just a fair amount of work, so it's normally not worth doing. Thank you. 
now we're going to come in here and we're going to see if we can pop this. Uh, really need this better secured. So we're going to grab it on the outside. Also flip this over, and eh, that's not going to get us anywhere. What you want to do is peel it out like this, and usually when you, once you peel a piece of it, you can peel the rest of it. I've got all of it out but this one piece here, and yeah, it looks pretty rough, but it's still going to seal, because remember, a piece of pipe is going to go in here. So I've just got to get the last of this um, out of here, and it's just unusually well bonded. Thank you. 
And this is why you normally don't bother to save fittings, even though you can undo them. It's normally too much of a pain in the butt. So you can see I've got just a little bit here that's left to come out. And it'll, it'll eventually come out. I think it just cracked on me. Yep, it just cracked. So, whatever, that one's toast. It's one and a half inch thread, which I don't think I have. Look and see if there's anywhere I can scavenge it from. Mm -mm. Nope. So, I think at this point I'm going to go get a two inch um, female adapter because that is less expensive. Well, except it's not going to fit right, so yeah, it's got to be another inch and a half adapter. Although, I don't have it. So yeah, I've got to go get a uh, one and a half inch male adapter. I'll be back. Not happy about this. Another hour of time wasted. All right, almost an hour gone, and here we are. We've got it. So we're gonna put some pipe dope on here or thread sealant. heavy coat of it and then we'll just thread this in here and that's what was on here before it's good stuff that's enough I'm using Rain or Shine, which is a, a water resistant glue. It doesn't require um, uh, it doesn't require that you use primer on it. Well, you can, but you don't have to. The downside is it's a little bit messy.
Where did... I gotta stop and find something. Alright, so I was trying to find the other half of the Union, and then I realized that is the Union. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and join this to this. Let you guys see what I'm doing. Try to manage the mess that I'm making. this on the o-ring if we can avoid it. And then when I insert this, I'm going to turn it a quarter turn and that will get rid of any uh, spots that don't have glue on them. That's that. So next, we're going to set this down here. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That should have gone on first. It's a good chance this glue is not set yet. Although the longer this waits, there we go. Ooh, that was close. Glue it. It'll all be good. You only have a couple, you really only have 30 seconds or so to do that. Um, different glues set at different speeds. Blue glue is fast. Sometimes it's called hot glue because it's really fast. good enough for me. Then we've got one on the top. And the one on top we're going to have to come over. So first things first, I'm going to pop all this, this loose uh, plastic off. And we'll, uh, that'll get trapped in the filter so it doesn't really matter. Alright, next thing's next. Uh, we need this and a, and a 90. So let me go get that set up. I'm going to glue a uh, union onto this pipe step. That way it'll be dry by the time I'm ready to fit the next piece of pipe. Um, and now what I need to do is make my stub for here. So I got to come up. Uh, that'll be with this. And first things first, we need to glue the reducer in here. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Yeah. 
this shirt's toast anyway. So we'll wipe our hands on it. Okay. All right. So next, I want to recycle this piece a little. This little piece of pipe. Make sure there's no glue on the O-ring, and we'll just loosely put this on here. So now what we gotta do is work out how much pipe up and how much pipe over and get it all aligned. So we'll dry fit this before we do the next step. So let me go get a tape measure and I'll be back. Alright. So 30 inches will put me a little over, so I'm gonna cut a piece that's 30 inches. Alright, so now we need to figure out. So it looks like 17 inches is more than enough. So, all right. So this piece is ready to be glued on. So we'll go ahead and take it off and we'll glue this assembly together. second to dry while we locate our next piece. And I gotta get a sharpie. I'll be back. We're gonna loosely set this here because what we gotta do is figure out where the square goes. And right now, well that's a lot of pressure on that pump housing. Right now, that's just kind of there. So I think a little bit needs to come off this, and then I'm going to eyeball this one. And say so that needs to trim there. start here and we need to take this much off.
and then we need to take that much off this one. All right. So we'll set this here. And we're going to leave it loose this time, because the next trick is to glue all this together. And the first step in that is to glue the lower portion. There's no alignment to worry about here because this is a straight, straight piece of pipe. So that's in. And next we're going to glue all of this at once. glue that it pulled apart on us. That's officially done. That side's done. Now I'm going to start on... So anyway, that, that's it for this install. Um, I can't really test it because I cut the pipe open down here. And um, But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to install a saltwater uh, chlorinator or a chlorine generator. And first step in that is cut this other pipe off. So let me relocate the camera. I don't know exactly what I want to do yet, so I'm going to cut it way out here. Good riddance. Let me put that in the recycle bin. I'll be right back. Now, I forgot to install the drain valve, so we go ahead and do that next. Yeah, that would have been a, a flying disaster. So it has a piece here that goes in, and then we need to glue a short section of pipe in. followed by an adapter. Yeah, so let me glue all this together. Okay, let's get there, so we'll go ahead and put this in. Actually, no, we're not going to do that quite yet. We will cap this, though. So now we've got that assembled. Oh. Put 
this together. Alright, now we can start on the other side. So let me get the generator out and look at the instructions and I'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, so this is the flow sensor and it's got to be pointed towards the pool, which is backwards of how I just set it up. So let me break it apart and fix it. Alright, so uh, yeah, that was a mess. That still feels good, so we'll go ahead and keep it and use it. Now we've got to figure out how the, we'll deal with the wiring later, but we've got to figure out how we're going to actually position the cell. So let me work on that. So I think we're just going to come straight up. Of course, straight as this thing can do. I'm going to bring it up probably this high. That, that looks good. When you're doing this, there's arrows on this that you need to pay attention to, so make sure you get the part that goes back to the pool on the right side. And then what we got to do is figure out where this is going to drop down. So let me get a piece of pipe and set this up. All right, so I think I can recycle this. Oh, this might not be tall enough. Yeah, that's just a little too short. All right, let me cut a piece of fresh virgin pipe. I was trying to save 15 bucks on this by reusing pipe, and I'm gonna look again and make sure I don't have another piece of inch and a half. All right, let's get this out here, and we're gonna glue this together. There's not much room to work in here, but it'll be all right. swing this up here and just hang this off here so we can figure out the dimensions and we are slightly off no matter what we do Ain't no nice way to do this. So let me show you what you guys are looking at. So I can't get this to line up. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is a dog leg where I go up, over, up. That's going to be a mess. But let me get after it. So I might have the fix. I have a couple of Street 45s. Um, gosh, only knows how old they are. But these might do the trick. So let me see if I can rig this up. And I'm going to move the camera where you guys can see what I'm actually doing. There we go. So, you always want to dry fit something like this. Yeah, this might give it to me. Let me swing that out of the way. mark so let me figure out where this needs to be cut I'm gonna go just a little higher than the joint and I'll go cut that all right so we're not gonna glue anything yet because we're still we're still trying to fit this and make sure that we can make all this 
yeah I can tweak it a little bit so I can have just a little bit of flex so I can make that fit this will work just fine so when you dry fit something like this you want to put marks so you can align it again in the right spot so first things first let's swing that out of the way let's bring the glue back over and now we'll put these together now it would be better to do this with schedule 40 but I happen to have DWV on hand and it will you know there's not a lot of pressure on this uh, schedule 40 is designed for 200 psi um, DWV will comfortably handle 10 to 15 psi and the pool system just really doesn't run any higher than that <clears throat> under normal circumstances and the consequences of a drip leak are just that I'll have to do some more plumbing which would be irritating so the black marks are index the pipes and it lets me get things right back where they belong all right let me get a union I'll be right back Now, if you had some spa flex, this would be another really great application for it, is putting some spa flex here. And spa flex is just, you know, PVC tube, PVC uh, flex pipe. Torque this down while it dries, and hopefully it'll dry where I bent it. Um, fortunately, PVC is a little bit flexible, and um, you know that probably needs something under it so it will stay level. But I think it'll be okay for how it is. I don't think this has to be level with the flow. So that's the plumbing part of this. And while this dries, I'm going to work on mounting the control panel. this where it's easy to get to and I think this is the spot the cord is long enough more than long enough to reach the uh, timer where the power box is so that's where we're gonna put it this cord is more than long enough to reach up there so that's a good spot for it so circuit pool is nice enough to include a template Yes, that's up. So we're going to put it approximately here, and then I'm just going to use some. Gorilla tape that I have around to hold it up. Any tape that will stick to your wall is sufficient. This is a single use product as far as I'm concerned. Now, one of the reasons I chose Circuit Pool stupid business practices like Hayward's and Pedicure, where they assume that you need to get a $15 an hour employee from your local pool store who may or may not know anything about plumbing or electrical. So we're going to go just slightly above. Both. 
right, let me go get a hammer. All right, so I'm not real big fond of plastic masonry anchors. I'm not a big fan of these. I don't like them. We're going to see if they work worth a crap. seem to be okay. All they are is a point to hold the uh, control box on the wall. Let's see if they This one in the upper right is a little too far in. I really think they should have done mounting ears on this. Um, I don't like that's why I don't like these anchors they just pull right out all right I'll be right back of this material to use it for what I'm about to use it for. But it will do the trick. It will seal these piece of crap anchors in. That'll do it. Really a travesty to use something that's eight dollars to do that. That's installed and uh, that stuff will cure over time. Set that in there nicely. Alright, so I need to put these o rings in under the salt cell. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. And these go right up in here. At least I think that's where these go. Yeah. Oh, maybe. 
maybe not. Maybe these go down here. This would make more sense. Yeah, that's where these go. So, first things first, let's bring these back to life. Well, it is catching all sorts of little crap in here, so that's pretty impressive. This is stuff that went through my pump that would have got caught in my filter. Yeah, it's catching all sorts of little fine stuff. So I think this is gonna do what it says it does. That's really cool. I didn't expect it to catch stuff quite so fast. So, and then my salt cell, this looks good. I don't see any water leaks. So um, what I'm gonna do is let this run for a few minutes and I'm gonna start working on uh, wiring because that's the next step is to wire this thing in. So I need to figure out Yeah, I need to put it under four, five, six with the rest of the stuff that's in there. Um, really, I need to find some wire and do some wire nuts there. Uh, and it's really, it's four and six that need the attention. So, right back. All right, so I'm gonna hook up the power cable. Switch cable is actually really hard to do because it's upside down behind. There it goes. So now that's hooked up. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up this cable. So next what I gotta do is wire it to power and that honestly isn't gonna take me that long. So I'm gonna clean up first and I'll be right back. All right, so these are set up. This is the main pool pump and when the pump is energized, it supplies power to the booster pump and this prevents the booster pump from ever running when the main pump isn't on, which reduces the risk of burning it up. So we're gonna come in through the bottom of this because it's just an easier place to double lug and I'm going to hide these back inside here. Bottom of the panel is not really a good place to store things, but it's going to work today. 
come up through here. Right back. All right, so next we need to bring one of these in. Um, this is a clamp, and honestly, it should go in. The kind with the screws on would be better for this box, but this will work. So we're just going to hammer it in place. And when you push it up, these little tabs pop out, and that stops it from coming back out again. We're going to open it up here, and I'm being suitably lazy. Now, one of the things that's interesting is this uses 100 watts of electricity, so that's hardly anything. But we want to get this in here in as workmanlike a manner as we can. That looks better. And I think that's enough. It's a little tighter than I'd like it, but... So that I'll keep that there. And then So basically, this will only power the generator when the main pump is running. And I could have put, it should go in the other box, but the other box is a little bit uh, tight. And this, this gives it a cleaner installation because I've got space to add another wire here. And um, I don't know if these are rated for double lug, but this style of a connector can be double lugged. So I need to go get a screwdriver so I can open the ground terminal. I'll be right back. All right. Apparently I missed this one. I'm grateful for glasses, but they really sometimes mess me up. I miss having good eyesight. Getting old sucks. All right, so let's flip that shut. And then we got to work this wire back behind here. The way we're going to do that is we're going to kind of curve it in here and hook. Pull that out. Now, there's one other thing that needs to be done to finish this install. I need to bond the um, chlorine generator with the rest of the pool equipment, but I don't have any number six wire, so that's not today's project. All right, there we go. So let's see what happens. Hey, we have power. 
slow. And I guess we need to read the instructions because we don't know what any of these things mean. So I'll have to figure that out. And uh, so let's see, are we making chlorine? Doesn't look like it. So I'll have to figure out what the lights actually do. Uh, I wish it was labeled better. And in the meanwhile, let's go back and look at our Typhoon. Look at all the crap that this thing has caught in the short amount of time it's been running. That's very, very impressive and it's gonna keep a ton of junk out of my uh, cartridge filter. And you, you can see all this stuff down here. And the way you drain it is you just open this and it'll come out. But we're gonna route that down to this drain. Um, good application for some spa flex. So I might pick some of that up at Home Depot and then I can just flush it periodically. So I'm gonna hit boost and just see if we can kick it into uh, chlorine generating mode. We should see, these are electrolytic plates that generate chlorine. All these bubbles are coming from but that's another project for another day I still don't think it's making any chlorine um, I think it thinks there's either too much or I, I'm gonna have to read the instructions and figure out what's actually going on So that's the chlorine level. And then... I don't know what the hell that was. Mm -hmm. I really should read the instructions. So apparently it's not uh, generating chlorine at the moment. So let me go get the instruction and look at those. And anyway, I think we're done. It's working. And uh, I won't have to buy $6 a pound chlorine anymore. And that's a great thing. Um, so I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and uh, look at my playlists to figure out where uh, the videos are that you're interested in. I organize my videos by playlists. And again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And be sure to make comments below.